welcome back to the lab. In the previous video, you'll see we took our, hang on, deep breath, 850 horsepower VQ35 DE plus TT mid-mounted V6, 3.5 litre twin turbo, four-wheel drive, sequential, five-speed, it's uh, too much, I've forgotten the rest of it. We took our monster race car to the racetrack and drove it for the first time in its new setup. And things actually went pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Went awesome. One thing that it did right at the very end of that test session that I did not pick up on, and I'll explain the whys and all that sort of carry on in a second, uh, we blew a boost coupler, a, a silicon reducer, on the compressor outlet for the driver's side, right-hand side for you American people. It's on the right-hand side of the car, not the... It's the turbo that's behind the driver's seat. Uh, we blew a coupler on that. A couple of reasons why that happens. Heat and pressure, and or a combination of both. And, and basically, that's what we've got in the march. So we've got 150 degrees C outlet temp on the turbos. Quite hot, because we're working them quite hard. Um, 19 PSI, basically, aimed boost pressure. Spiking a little bit higher. Uh, and the initial throttle application and when you reduce throttle. So, don't touch your flash with, with, uh, with um, code around. So, one of these here did that. Pop! So, bye bye boost. Uh, it did that right at the end of the test session, the very last time I put my foot up it. Uh, probably not on the main straight, it was probably earlier on the track. And um, as I let off, it popped right around that area there. So I'll show you on a, let's draw a little pretty graph on the whiteboard here. Hang on. There's our whiteboard. Didn't even move. See, I just flicked the screen across. We'll just try to see if we can do this all in one take. So we've got um, pressure here. The numbers don't matter. Um, but this is going to be, this is all the boost. And this is, um, none of the boost this is vacuum and somewhere here is a this is a line where it's atmospheric pressure so you get your numbers go higher here it should be i think it's two, 282 kpa or something let's just write 280 kpa i said the numbers don't matter now i'm putting numbers on there and then whatever that is minus the vacuum whatever this is zero zero here um not six zero that was, that's a bit better isn't it this is time and so as you drive around the racetrack, depending on how what your scale you set at, when you stick your foot up it, and the boost goes right like that, and it'll stay wherever it is. It'll peak a little bit and then come back down like a... And it'll stay there, and then when you get off, the throttle comes down here psh, into the vacuum, and then back on the throttle, rah, whatever. So you should see a whole heap of lines doing this. They should all come to the same amount, because you've got a target of whatever that target is. 280 in our case, and I've drawn it all below the... The actual line but whatever so you should see that right so what i do is when i go back through the logs if i see um something and it's gone like this to here hang on we've got less boost pressure than what we had before that means we've got some sort of an issue we've got a boost leak or something and we need to go looking for the problem the problem that we had well not problem the situation we've struck it before situation we had at taupo is we were right at the end of the test session when we had um, when we had this, so this happened right here. So this is the end of the original log. This is the start of the new log. Ignore that one. That's not there. So on Friday, driving the car around the track, what 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 what? Is Glenn going to edit in a little sample of acceleration? Let's try and do that here. Do it here, Glenn. Put it in here, it's not here getting stuffed up. So this is Friday. This line here, I go away. I put the car away, I drive up to Hamilton and the Ute, which is fast, but it's, let's be honest, it's not as fast as the March. Can't be right. And I drive all the way back down to Taupo, get used to that, get into the car, Saturday morning and drive it and we've got that much boost instead of that much boost. That's 11 PSI, that's 19 PSI. I drive it to the end of the session, feels good, feels strong, does what it needs to do, not really worried about 
speed all that much, just driving the car, getting used to it. Look at the logs afterwards. We can't see this because this is a different log. I download that log and all we see is the boost is the same all the way across. We don't see a change. We don't see it fail and, um, and go pop. There's a couple of blowing and now we've only got that much boost. So I never looked at the actual number at the end of the chart, which is what I'm, I've done wrong. My bad. I should know what this number needs to be, the peak number, and I should look for that and identify whether we're actually reaching our target or not. And I didn't. So we spent the weekend driving around on 11 PSI rather than 19 PSI. So my bad. So small power reduction there. How much? Don't know. A bit. It's got to be 100 kilowatts or something like that. Maybe. Not sure. It was enough that the car probably, well, the car's just going to go faster, right? It's no question. Uh, how much faster? Uh, not really worried about this. I'm just pointing it out because it's uh, some of you guys will be interested in it. I did say, uh, maybe not so much on video, maybe on video, not sure. I did say I was considering pulling the boost controller off the solenoid so that we would just go wastegate pressure and drive car on wastegate pressure for that first weekend anyway uh just because it'd be safer better idea perhaps uh as it turns out i didn't need to i just kind of just drove the car on the test day at full boost and was comfortable with what i had um and as i as i said earlier it just it just felt right anyway on saturday and sunday it didn't it wasn't yeah it was okay remembering of course i haven't driven the car in five months and I had one session on the Friday, which is on video, and you guys can watch it. Um, that thing that the skid factory does, I don't know which corner the button ends up in, but there's the video there. Uh, so, that happens. Not worried. I'll post this video up. You can watch this tonight. It's kind of like a debrief of the test session. Um, and then we'll get on with what's happened on the Saturday. So that... The rest of the car, as far as performance and all that sort of carry on, yeah, good, happy, awesome. Um, test session, I may have missed one gear change potentially. I think it was a downshift into the sweeper, not pushed it forward hard enough, didn't quite get third or second or whatever it was. Other than that, every gear change mint, all works sweet. Using the clutch, gear change is a bit slower, a lot slower, a heck of a lot slower than what they could be um and no flat shifting or anything like that i think tomorrow's video i think some of the sessions you might see some shifting without the clutch on the up shift not the down shift but still not being mega quick with it or anything like that so there you go i'll put some more brum brum noises here eh you see some more car brum brum things because i don't do them very well um and I should just speed them up for a chuckle, eh? See what it'll go like with 900 kilowatts or something. Next bit of video is BS. It's sped up, but it'll be funny. So um, tomorrow's video will be some actual track sessions, trying to set some times. The stuff is all a little bit out of order. You've seen the, the best time that we end up doing for the weekend. You guys have seen that video. If you haven't, again, here's this thing where I point to a corner and it's... It's there, it's there, whatever. Um, you've seen how that turns out. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Not today. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers, bye. Brum, brum, noises coming. Watch.